Audio Frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Hey, the top end of Stevenson, Grado! Now it's time to welcome to Football Daft a man who played 11 seasons for Hibs and along the way picked up six caps for Scotland and had other clubs including Rangers and Norwich and he's now manager at Airdrie. Please welcome to the show, Ian Murray. Hi there, good day. How you doing? How you, How you doing, well, How are you guys? Stuck in the house, mate, where were you? <laughs> I Surviving like isolation. Be. I just it's getting bored, boring now. Day four or something, is it? Day five? Aye. Aye, it's, it's, it's day three for me personally, man, but it's, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm climbing the walls. Usually that's just to get something for the top shelf, but now it's, <laughs> uh, it's a nightmare, honestly. <laughs> I feel your pain, brother. <laughs> so... Ian, what, what 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 happened? Like in terms of like, how does does Eldrick phone you and say like, right, that's it, everything's on hold. You need to go home. Like, how did it how did it come about? Yeah, I think um, it was quite bizarre. When we were training on Friday after, well, Friday late Friday morning for the game on Saturday, and we got the call that the game was off. And at that point, you know, all we were told the game's off. There's no other guidelines for us at the moment. So we trained on the Saturday morning. We also trained on the Monday because, again, at that point, there was still no real guidelines of what we were all doing. So we were as normal, um, and then the guidelines eventually came out, which effectively closed us down um, until further notice, which is what we've done. So this is our second week um, of being closed. Well, this will, this will be hitting Airdrie particularly hard because it's great though, and Stephen will know. Um, we, I, I've attended quite a lot of functions at Airdrie Stadium. And that would have been quite a good source of income for them, so they'll be getting hit with that as well. Oh, um, I totally how, forgot about that too. Why, Ross Owen? Uh, how's the cl- how's the club going to be going to be standing uh, in a financial stead with regards to all you're I mean, I think like every other club, we're going to take a hit somewhere. Um, you know, it's, just, it's impossible not to. I mean, we're fine. We're fine at the moment, but as you touch on, the stadium is a huge source of income, which helps fund the the playing side of it. So, you know, the longer this goes on, the more it affects us and off the pitch, uh, rather than on it. But you know, certainly at the moment we're fine. Um, but again, I mean, this is rocket science. You know, we're using money now that we we're, we're trying to keep for next season, so budgets will be affected, no doubt. Mm-hmm horrible situation but it's just I mean there's nothing else you can do really is there you just need to stay and just sit and wait and just bide your time yeah there's nothing we can do that that's it you know in jobs most people that are working from home at the moment have stuff to do to be honest with you we, we don't have much to do because you know everything is on hold in terms of we've got eight games to go potentially we don't know if we're playing them we don't know if the season's over, we don't know if there's going to be reconstruction. We, we just don't know. So for us to go and plan, it's impossible for us to go and even look at players, you know, players that we're perhaps interested in for next year. We can't watch them now because there's no game. Right. So the whole thing just kind of literally has closed down. I've never known it to be like this. There's certainly very little communication between, um, you know, managers and players, players and agents, agents and owners, because there's, there's nothing to talk about because we don't know what's right. happening. Right. So Ian, Ian, if this if this does go longer than the summer, where does that stand you with regards to players' contracts? Would they still be able to play for the club? Or would you maybe sign them a like a short term couple of month extension? Um, if if have you thought about anything like that? Yeah, I mean the ramifications of of the outcome of this virus are huge you know it's very easy to look at layman's terms let's play the season in august let's play the season september whenever that is but players contracts normally run out in june around about june 12 something like that i think i think if i might be wrong but i think you can only sign a player after that for a month for a month minimum so if we were to renew, renew contracts for say for the sake of a week it's going to cost the club a month that makes sense yeah. Um, you know, I don't know where it stands with pre contracts with players that have already signed. It's saying that their contract starts on a certain date at another club. So, you know, the way football works, you, you could 
find yourself, you know, crossing a season with another club. It's just so complicated at the moment that I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't know how they're going to get around it because after, you know, 30 games in our league, I think 30 in the Premier League as well, nothing's been decided. So, you know, they, they can't hand out trophies without um, finishing the season. Um, so, you know, it's a terrible situation. Right. It's worrying times for everybody, Ian. Um, so, but let's talk about Happier times, man. I'm just looking at your Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Happier times. You started your youth career at Hutchison Vale. How many players have came through that team? Oh, my it's God. Lost, what, a, man. what a club that is. What a club that is. There, there has been. There's been, oh God, I don't know how many, but there's there's been tons. Of, you know, Hutchison Vale's been around forever. So that, you know, for, for years and produced loads of good players. And I was actually at a function maybe three weeks ago. It was, uh, I think it was a 60th anniversary and it listed all the players that they'd brought through. So, um, you know, they've certainly in Edinburgh they've outweighed all the other other boys' clubs. But I, I get the feeling that you know it's um, it's getting harder for Hutchie Vale because there's so many teams now. You know, the teams are yeah. popping up all over the place. Well, I think one of one of their young boys have just signed for Celtic. Celtic had to uh, had to fend off Chelsea and Man United. I think it was or Liverpool for this boy. So they're still producing talent still to this day. You know. Who did yeah. you play with there, Ian? Oh, I played with, um, God, I played with loads of guys there. I played with Mikey Stewart, uh, Colin Nish, Mark Birchall, uh, Gary Caldwell. Really? Oh, the ones, uh, is that right? Yeah, Stephen Caldwell. Um, I think who else? We had, some, we had a lot of good players. Some of them never quite made it to the level that we thought they were going to make it, but overall we had some good players, some really good players. Well, quite a, quite a lot of that was the nucleus of the, the Hibs team that won the League Cup, wasn't it? Like uh, yeah, Gary Caldwell yeah. and all yeah, of them. Yeah, just a lot of like Kevin Thompson, I think Scott Brown possibly, um, Derek Varden, all these guys all played for Hutchivale. Um, and Cummings so, did as well, did he know? Can come down Cum- with Cum- Cummings as well, yeah, he did. Right. He did. So they've always produced, you know, <clears throat> Certainly for Hibs and Hearts, it's a, it's a go-to club in Edinburgh to go and you know, source of better young ones. Aye, that's brilliant. Have you ever thought about having a look at them yourself, look for Airdrie? Yeah, it's difficult because at 15, 14 to 15, the really good ones are you know getting courted elsewhere, bigger clubs, so we, we can't really do anything about that. But there's certainly you know players that you know still at that age, 14, 15, that would that would fit into you know a profile like Airdrie. And Brave Rovers, you know, something like that. They do produce good right. players. Right. Well, Ian, I'm a, I'm a Celtic supporter and I live in the same street as Albion Rovers Stadium. So straight, <laughs> straight away, you and I are at odds, mate. Um, so <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on Albion Rovers these days? They're not doing too well, are they? No, but uh, do you know what? They were in a heck of a state this time last year. Um, you know, they were really, really toiling. And I know it's obviously your grade and the, the Rovers like their, their derby games and the rivalry. Um, but, but I think, I think you know, in, in the terms of rivalry, they try and help each other. You know, and I, I certainly don't think anyone here wanted to see Albion Rovers, uh, you know, out of the league um, at all. And, and they managed to survive. Um, you know, and they're not doing too great at the moment. But well, in, that, so- in that league, they need to, it's, it's about staying up for teams like that. Aye. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for breaking, I think they'd be out in their arse this year. To be honest with you, um, but they're they're doing they're, they're doing all right, man. They're, they've had a good a few decent results recently. Um, I had them in my curtain uh, to get beat off a of Cove Rangers, and they they fucking I don't know where they pulled that result from. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, God, every time I bet against them, they win. That so bag. Did you take Cove Rangers, you said? Of course I did, mate. Ah, Cove well, Rangers are yeah. about 40 goals a week. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, there's a rumour that you wore a hip stop underneath your school uniform and you're getting your school pictures done, is that true? <laughs> God's sake, that was years ago. Um, I, it is true, actually, believe it or not. I was only about, God, it's at primary school, so um must have been about eight or nine. Um, but my mum wasn't happy when she got my photos back. <laughs> but, <laughs> did you go to the Hibs games? Well, did you go to the Hibs games yeah, yourself yeah. as a wee boy? Yeah, was, my, my dad was a was a Hibs fan. My brother was a Hibs fan. Um, what actually happened was my brother was a ball boy at Hibs, <coughs> and uh, I was a ball boy at Meadowbank Thistle. Believe it or not, um, back in the day, because there was no space at Easter Road. So when my brother left. He left his job to go and play in a, play football on a Saturday. 
So I took over at Easter Road. Um, so I was a ball boy. So I was about 12, 13. And then had a season ticket until I signed, basically. That's um, amazing, man. I actually, actually, actually kids dream on it, man, playing for the team that you support. And then it <coughs> must have been amazing, mate. It, it was. I mean, when I sat, especially when you're young, you know, I was only 17, left school. So I'd gone from watching these players every week, basically, to, you know, having lunch with them, um, training with them. And to me, that's, you know, guys like John Hughes, Tony Ruggier, um, were guys I'd watched week in, week out. So to me, they were heroes and idolised at the time, um, you know, especially for that initial first year I was in there as a kid. Right, right Ian, quick question, mate, right? <clears throat> who was. Who was faster? I don't know if you were there at the same time, but who was faster? Ivan Sproul or Didi Aragat? Oh, close. Close. I think... I think Didi Aragat was quicker. Didi Aragat? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Over 10 yards, Sproul was lightning. Aye, but listen, I remember when Aragat... Was... I would say when Agat got in his stride, man, he would lace uh, his foot, wouldn't he? he was, I, I think that the era Gat could have chased down a cheater, to be fucking uh, honest. Honestly, <laughs> I remember one game at Easter Road, and I obviously played by Gat. Um, I was playing left back, he was playing right wing. It was just an absolute mauling, and I mean a mauling. I, mean, I remember when he made his debut for Celtic, right? And he made his debut against St Mirren, and we'd signed him for 50 Gs, right? So nobody was really uh, expecting fireworks. And he gave the St Mirren left back about a 30 yards of a start and he went by him as if he was standing still, right? And there was an audible gasp for the crowd. It wasn't a tear. <laughs> it was, whoa! We knew we had a runner on our hands. Right. He was absolutely superb. Great he was actor and all. Great he was in a... Oh, fuck, here we go. There we go, talking to each other, man. <laughs> I was just <laughs> going to say he was a great actor and all, man. He was in a shot at glory, but... <laughs> <laughs> Who was the best player you played with? Sorry, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> right, Bob. Yeah, Bob, Bob. Also mentioned here, Bob, 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 just here. Ian, you scored in your second goal for Hibs. Your second appearance for Hibs. You should mention second, that, man. That's, that's amazing. Uh, second appearance. I played up at Paradise the week before. Uh, I'll tell you the story. It's a quick, sh- short one, but just a bit of luck you need out. <coughs> Hibs were going on um, mid-break tour to Trinidad and Tobacco that season and I wasn't going. Right. I had, been, had particularly good form in the reserves, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, a couple of senior players pulled out a couple of days before so I got to go <coughs> and eventually when I went there I actually done okay, done quite well. Came back, made my debut in the first um, game after the split up at Tanner Dice um, done okay, you know, it was fine, nil nil, but quite happy to get through it, and then uh, next game he comes sub, came on against Old Fairmont and scored within about a minute, which was good, because I wasn't a goal scorer, but to get that off your back, early doors is always always vital, it was a tap in probably three yards, but that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, exactly. the, the feeling of, of scoring a goal in a game like that, compared to anywhere else, at, you know, training or reserve games is, when you get that chance, the place goes silent for about half a second, just half a second, and you're not quite sure if it's gone in because you need to wait for the roar to realise that you scored. Because you is that in? Is that, is that in? And, they think, and then you realise you scored. So it's a, it's a, it's a surreal, surreal feeling, bizarre. What a buzz, mate. What a buzz. So you, you played with, you must have played with Frank Sozzi and Pat Alain in that, didn't you? Played with, I was very fortunate when I went to his team. I had a good manager first and foremost, and I had some really good players. We had some unbelievable players. Um, we had Big Ulrich Larson, who went to Celtic. We had um, obviously Sozi, Latapi, um, Pat Alainen, Mark Libra, David Zutelli. Ah, uh, David Zutelli. Yeah, we, honestly, we had a Paco Luna. We had a great team. We really did. The, the only, not problem at the time, but the only thing for us was Rangers and Celtic were so so strong at that time as well that they were almost unbeatable um, mm-hmm. you know, we played Celtic in a cup final in uh, 2000 I think it was and we, we had a really good side Celtic just beat a 3-0 and we had played well that day um, but mm-hmm. Celtic had Sutton, Larson Maravchek, McNamara you know, Petrov, was, everybody you know, it was just, I was it was a just game that so Stubbs hard. made his comeback and after, he's, after yeah. he had the cancer 
then that's Stubbs, right, Stubbs right. came back for that game. That was the, the treble. That was Martin O'Neill's yeah. first season. That's right. Uh-huh. Stubbs, me, I'll be. You know, it was just a, it was just a machine you're playing against. Right, but that was because I think with Hibs no third that season was that season 0 5 where he's just he's were really really tremendous that season yeah we, we finished third with um, oh that sorry 0 5 was Tony Mowbray we finished third uh, right. with a really young with a really really young team that was more Thomson Brown myself Colin oh Brown, right I'm jumping uh, that was a great Hibs that's the team oh. I'm thinking about mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the thing about the back then for us was we had no fear, you know, with Derek Ryan up front, Gary O'Connor, and if you speak to Derek and Gary before the game, it doesn't matter who you're playing against, they both tell you they're scoring a hat trick. So you're sitting going, well, you're six and a lot, brilliant, you know, and that's how <laughs> that's how confident these boys were. They didn't give it honestly, they couldn't have cared less. Just what we played. What was Gary O'Connor like, man? He, I mean, I've met him a few times, man. He's he's a character, <laughs> not obviously, you know. <laughs> Why? Yes. Some, you know what, Gaz has got a heart of gold, big Gary. He, Aye. He's he's just got himself in some silly situations, <laughs> but he would he, he, he wouldn't hurt a fly. He would honestly, he would not hurt a fly. And I tell you what, he was a hell of a player. He could have been Definitely. better if he stuck at it, but he was powerful. He was quick. Uh, he was he was strong and he scored goals. He was a good good player. Where has he moved to? He moved to Russia, didn't he? He right, played we'll in, we'll in Moscow. Moscow. Aye, we'll 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 Russia. Russia. Aye. He went to Russia for about a year. He was always a handful, but, like, a handful for defenders, man. He was a big boy. And... Ma- oh, what do you want? He was probably one of the few real number nines that I can remember being produced by a, by a Scottish club in the last 10, 15 years. I don't remember too many. He's a real big... You know, number nine. You go, God, here we go. Um, I don't, I don't remember too many getting produced. Probably, after probably that. the last one before him would maybe be Big Duncan Ferguson going back that far. Yeah, similar, similar type, similar type of player, um, aggressive and all that, good in the air, just a big handful, big nuisance and and big good. You Aaron know, Ram. A big Batman, as I say, we just we've not produced many of them. Who's the best player you have played with, Habzin? Um, Maybe I got. Maybe I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really got. Um, it's it was between between Sozi and Latapi. Oh, Latapi! You know, what a great they were player. Both, uh, they were both brilliant in different ways. Sozi was hard as nails. People would realise hard as nails. Um, passing of the ball was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. He's I remember technically phenomenal, wasn't he, Sozi? He was. I, I remember Town Castle and. It was a New Year's Day derby game. It was night game. I was a sub. It was about. It was behind the goals warming up, and Sozi had the ball in the six yard box. I kid you not. And the Hearts guy came running towards him. He just put it through his legs and got the other side. And I'm standing, going to myself, "What are you doing?" He was, that, he was that good and that confident. He just, you know, it was like water on his back. And with Happy done all his work, obviously at the top end of the park. But he, his, his, he was incredible. Football. I think if you had to ask the two of them, but Frank Sozi would probably say, "Man, we'll count European cups." <laughs> yeah, exactly, I, exactly. I think Frank wins just in that one. <laughs> By the way, Ian, I don't know if MD's tell you before, but you look a bit like Jon Snow after Game of Thrones. I've never seen that. Have you not? Neither have I, mate. Neither have I. No, but not. somebody has said that to me before. Yeah, there you go. Eh? Great minds. Who was it? Was it uh, Stephen Can't Hawking mean. that said it to you? I know. Like, I, I like to think of myself on, on, a, on a farm mentally with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and physically. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, oh, you go oh, back, man. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no. I was, I was just going to say in 2005, you made a very, very big move. Across the M8 to Glasgow yeah. to Rangers. How did Would you feel? Played against Selic for for Hibs. That he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel signing for Rangers? How did it come about? How explain to us the process of that one, Ian? Well, obviously McLeish. I'd had Alec McLeish at um, Hibs. He was the manager. He went to Rangers maybe a year and a half um, before, and they they'd wanted to sign me. I'd been out actually been out injured about a year. Uh, you missed the full season, did you know? Uh, roughly, so next again season I came back, um, and that's how it really came about. We came, uh, you know, just said, look, we're interested, blah blah blah. We, my contract at Hibs was running out in the summer, um, and they, they, they wanted me to go in January to Rangers, but I kind of said, look, I think I've got a chance here to win the Scottish Cup because at that time I did, 
we're in the semi-finals. Um, so I wanted to stay. Anyway, long story short, we, we didn't, you know, we got beat in the semi-finals, and then Rangers came back in the summer and offered, you know, offered me a contract. And at the time, it was really hard because I was really happy at Hibs um, with a good side, but I just felt, you know, from a personal point of view, it was the right thing to do. Um, and when I got to Rangers, um, and when you see inside the club and uh, you signed for them and stuff like that, I mean, I was obviously I was I was proud to play for Hibs, but I was I was you know exceptionally proud to to sign for Rangers. It's, it's a huge club. Was there a because did McLeese sign you? Because Le Glenn was on the pre-contract then, wasn't he? It looked as if we knew that that but Le Glenn was coming to Rangers, but who actually signed you? Yeah, McLeish signed me. So right. McLeish, we had one season. Then yeah, McLeish left. Paul Gwen came in. Oh, sorry, but you right. I, so you got a season at McLeish at ah. Rangers. Yes. Oh yes. no, I, I thought. Sorry, I got mixed up. I thought that was the season. So you played in the team where the, the McLeish's last season, where we came. Hank, did yeah. we know come third or something like that season? Yeah, we finished. Hank's Hearts finished second. We finished right. third. That was the we year were, we got to the last sixteen of the Champions League. Correct. That that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I always remember you you played your part in Helicopter Sunday. That's right, yeah. I always I remember because was... we had signed you in the pre contract at Minovo. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> 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 and I always remember Novo cut the shot, it took a deflection off you and went in, didn't it? Well, that's what people think, but if you watch it back, it actually hit Gary Caldwell. Oh, is it? I always thought it was uh, you. That's a nah. surprise, Gary Caldwell, yeah. putting an OG in. <laughs> it always hit Gary Caldwell. Uh, it hit him. Because uh, he always yeah. thinks it hurts. I've always said we signed Ian Murray in uh, a pre contract and he done his part in Helicopter Sunday right. for us as well. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's, yeah, no, nah, I, I wish I could lay claim to fame that, but it wasn't me. Did you get a bit of abuse in the dressing room after that when we were all celebrating? Nah, the league, nah, we nah. We, 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 the funny thing was, we couldn't lose by too many goals that day. I think if we lost by two and Hearts won by two, we got knocked out of the European place. Ah, yeah, actually. So, no, sorry, Aberdeen won by two, but they were playing Hearts, so we were thinking Hearts won't be doing us any favours, so we had to keep it tight. So we knew right. if we'd tried, that's why the last 10 minutes were just walking about, because we were we knew what the situation we were in, and the Rangers were happy, so it turned right. into a bit of just a, a right. kickabout, really, to be honest. So see after, um, kind of, McLeish had left and you were still there. You you did play under Le Guin a wee bit, but didn't you, to begin with, at the start of the season? Yeah, well, uh, what happened, Le Guin came in, I was quite happy. Um, you know, he wanted, said to me, he wanted me to stay, which is what you want to hear. And I took, I went, we went three season two to South Africa. I mm-hmm. came back and didn't feel well. I took a, <laughs> believe it or not, I took a virus of some sort. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was out for five months. And then, um, uh, I was coming back as this sort of stuff was happening with like Gwen was falling out with people and there was a lot of pressure on him and they weren't doing too well. So I actually only played one game. It was his last game at Motherwell. Um, where, ironically, the day he dropped Barry Ferguson and stuff and Boyd like that. done the six when he scored yeah, the goal. Scored the penalty. Up. Yeah. Um, and then he was away. He was away after that. But, but he was actually he was actually quite good. He was just mm-hmm. probably at the wrong club at the wrong, at the wrong time. Um Wait. Did, what, see how after that game, can you do you have any memories of that game? Um, when Boyd had done that with his fingers and stuff, did he was it just a matter of and out getting the bus and get him, or did he speak to uh, you? Nah, pretty much because at, at that time it's business as usual. You've won the game, it's very unusual Aye. for a manager to leave after a, a win, so it was business as usual. And then a few days later, we we get found out that he's not be back, and obviously that's when Walter Smith came in. Um, with uh, Alan McCoyce and Kermit Dill. Which must have gave you a bit a good boost there. Yeah, Walter's, Walter was brilliant. You know, I, I mean, Walter Smith let me go at the end of the day and he obviously didn't pick me for certain Scotland games and all that. But as a manager, um, he was he was excellent. Really, really good. Um, very, very um, harsh, but uh, also very fair. The type of guy when you, you know, I've never seen him without a shirt and tie on. You know, shoes all Class. always immaculate. Uh, he's absolutely immaculate. I mean, he when he talks to you, you listen. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the reason we got on so amicably was because we were just quite honest with each other. And he told me, "You're you're ten percent down on last season, did it do all that sort of stuff." Um, so and that's what you want. So um, you can be firm and you can be harsh, but he's he's definitely fair. Really? Who was it? Was it? 
<coughs> was it Peter Grant that took you to Norwich? Yeah, Peter uh, took me down to Norwich and Jim Duffy was assistant actually as well. Um, with was that in there good? Uh, it was good. I mean, it was a, again a club that had just been relegated from the Premier League in the Championship, so budgets had been cut a little bit. Um, we had a few Scottish players. We had Mark Fotheringham, who was down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Marshall uh, was a goalkeeper. Simon Lappin, um, myself, eventually. And then we actually signed, I think John Hartson came down eventually. Chris Martin was actually in the youth team um, at Norwich at the time. And I, I told Hibs to sign him, actually, for 50 grand. And didn't do it. <laughs> um, you know, you know he's the highest, the second highest scoring Scotsman in the Championship history. Uh, he's, he's a good player because he was about 19, 20 when he broke out in Norwich, so he didn't quite cut. Well, the manager didn't like him. So um, he, he, I think he went to Luton, who were non league at the time. Mm-hmm. But he was always he's always decent. He was always very very decent. Um, and then obviously Peter, we, we were, made a poor start to the season. Peter got <laughs> sacked. Um, Jim Duffy took the team uh, three or four games, and then eventually Glenn Wooder came in as a as a permanent manager after that. That must have been some boys having Jim Duffy and Peter Grant in the dressing room, but two <laughs> characters, man. I, was, I mean, I think the English lads, you know, especially down in Norwich, are slightly more conservative down there and a bit more quiet. I think when you know, if you had Jim, Peter, and, and the rest of the Scottish players, when we start speaking really quick with each other in our dialogue, then <laughs> I think you know, some a few times they were telling us to calm down, but that's just the way we spoke. We didn't, you know, it was fine, um, right. but it was good. That was, I mean, it, I was only there six months, but it was it was a good experience. How did you go on with Glenn Roder? Uh, not too good. No, he was, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, probably for the first manager in my, in my career actually who. Um, for whatever reason, just just didn't like me, um, which was fine. And if someone doesn't like you, you tend not to like them too much as well. So, you know, it, it was kind of mutual um, dislike there. And the, the only good thing was that is, um, I was only there about three months of him, maybe three months, and I was back up the road, so it wasn't too long. And um, you know, eventually he got found out a little bit, and he was away as well. Mm. What was the? Did they just no pick you for games? Did you just no? Did you just not really talk much, or was there just no communication at all? I think I think the communication was was a bit strange. You know, I don't think a lot of the players took to, to, to be <coughs> honest. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just you know, he came in and just kind of um, you know, I wouldn't say put a sledgehammer through the, through the place, but he'd, he'd done it verbally to everybody, so you kind of lose a little bit of players' respect, you know, in the first right. day, second day, and if you start to leave out bigger names as well, you know, which can happen, then it, then it causes problems. You have to have good good young players to come straight in and play, and I don't think Norwich had that um, at the time. I think, I think to be honest, you looking back, the club were kind of in a little bit of disarray when you when you look at the appointments of, of their managers. Hey, it looks like it looks as if he's got a kind of face you'd want to slap, isn't he? Oh, he's oh, he comes out with some crack. He's came out with some crackers anyway. Was he was he no quite close to getting the England job at one point, Glenn Roder? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, his 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 tactics and stuff are, are pretty good. Um, it's just his delivery of his tactics aren't aren't the best. And in my opinion, you know, there'll be people who rave about him and you know claim he's created them as players so he's obviously very intelligent um, in football and he's done well at West Ham um, so yeah I think for a while he was very highly thought of and he was close to to get one of those jobs but I'm not sure where he is now I think last I heard he was maybe at Stevenage as, as director of football so I don't suppose I'll be getting a job there soon <laughs> Have you, <laughs> have you uh, I asked actually asked Barry Ferguson right um, and I, I threw a wee curveball into him but with regards to like some of the managers that you've not enjoyed working under, have you taken any of their their teachings or any of their mannerisms or anything and, and put it towards your own uh, management style? Um, no, I think you take more um, stuff from the playing, you know, the playing field or from managers. There's, there's sometimes managers and by their own admission I'll put on a session it's just terrible you know, and it st- still goes on now because you just don't know how it's going to go. The players might not turn up. Um, the weather could affect it, you know, your size of your pitch, numbers, all that sort of stuff. So you try and take stuff from that. I think what you try and take <clears throat> out with the pitch side of it is probably n- seeing what you've not liked from managers and saying to yourself not to use that rather than you're going to use it. Um, mm. How you how you dress certain situations. 
Um, I think game day is slightly different. People will say, this is how you should react, this is how what you should say. We're like the supporters when we're on the touchline. It's an instant, it's a flash. You know, we Sometimes we can't remember what we've said 30 seconds before because we're straight back onto something else. So sometimes, um, you know, managers will get a wee bit, I wouldn't say slaughtered, but people will say they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do that. But in the heat of the moment, in the height of the game, you know, these things happen. Aye, I know, but you don't want to end up in a situation like Alan Pardew where you're sticking your head in the fucking ball boy, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, by, but I tell you, we had an instant last, uh, in, in the league last, last season it was, we were playing East Fife and our guy went to take a throw in and <laughs> I don't know why, but Darren Young stuck his leg out and tripped him up. Do <laughs> <laughs> And it was just out of nowhere, and, and it was, and he actually just turned and went, "I don't know what I've done," <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't mean it in any malice, or he, he just done it in the heat of the moment to try to stop the phone. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, so it's just it's bonkers, honestly. It's, bonkers. it's funny because I've just taken that in the Google. Shocking moment: football attacks young ball boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. <laughs> honestly, brilliant. Oh my. Christ, you want to get back up the road then to Hibs after? <coughs> yeah, I was dying to get back up the road, to be honest. Um, I was very fortunate again because obviously Mixer Pat Lyon was getting the Hibs job. Uh, Hibs with John Collins had just left and um, I was told Hibs wanted me, but that time they didn't have a manager and, and they wouldn't tell me who it was. So I was like, right. So it was very hard to sign for someone without knowing who the manager is. Um, but I, I kind of trusted the broad. <laughs> I got it, exactly, you know. uh, so I got there and it was um, a mixer, uh, which was brilliant. And then I came up the road on Thursday night, trained on the Friday morning and played against Hearts on the Saturday morning. So it just, I hadn't played for about three months either, so I was just jumping back in. What a way to come back though, eh? Edinburgh Derby. Ah, it was perfect. Perfect game because it gave me a chance. You know, my first game as well back from Rangers. You know, the Sims fans don't care about the Norwich part. They just care about the Rangers part. <laughs> my first game back which gave me a wee chance to try and win some of them over um, which we actually right, lost 1-0 couple of two but, footers mate couple of two footers that will yeah. sort you right out they'll be back on side no bother exactly that was the plan <laughs> so what do you think man <laughs> my fucking my phone's gone do you know who's texting me uh, uh, fucking Ewan oh fuck him fuck off Tell me, get to fuck. Tell me, we've got we've got Hibs superstar ways. He's just, <laughs> he's just still going on about us, right? Sorry, Brian. <laughs> Sorry, Brian. All right. Fuck, so, Ian, um, with, <laughs> with regards to your time playing for Scotland, um, you, was it six six caps you got? Uh, who was your best player that you played against when you played for Scotland? Uh, yeah, six caps or best player? God, I don't actually know. To be honest. Games weren't the games weren't against that high opposition. We had the Japan Japan away was hard. That was in the Korean Cup and they were going to the World Cup uh, the next of the year. They had some I can't, God, I can't remember their names, believe it or not, but they had some, you know, quality, quality players. Fucking hell, mate, um, you'd have played against Nakamura. My favourite ever. I might have, I don't know. I don't know if he was playing. Ian Chris does they rate Nakamura. I do rate Nakamura, don't listen to him. Right. What happened was I could pick my favourite ever select team. And I fucking completely forgot about Nakamura. And I put Scott Sinclair in instead. And I've took pelters for it ever since. But as a man, as you understand, being a manager, you understand that stats and stuff like that come into it. Right? And Scott Sinclair's actually better than Brian Loudrop when you put it like that. So, listen, I don't know. I I like a stat. I like a stat. See, there we go. I I didn't say that. I just said I like. I just said I like a start. He <laughs> rates yeah, Scott funny. Sinclair higher than Brian Loudrop. Crazy, isn't it? I I I don't agree with that. But well, listen, Ian, I'll tell you what I told everybody else. The stats don't lie, mate. Right? So you can, <laughs> you can sit there and you can wax lyrical about your Brian Loudrop, but we don't know what the truth is, mate. All right? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Stato up there, man. Honestly. <laughs> Stato! <laughs> my, my wee horn rim glasses and that on. Man. <laughs> so, Ian, so how you did you get any management? Oh, fuck, <laughs> 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 Sorry, 
Yeah, do you go first, yeah. mate? You go. No, you go. Oh, for fuck's sake. How do you ask him how he be- became a manager? How do you do that? <laughs> Two minutes. Wait, yeah. Uh, to look at my notes. How did you get into management? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I was actually in the States. Um, you were in a state? I was, I was in an earlier state. I was in the States coaching kids. And um, Dumbarton, I went on BBC News or something, BBC Football and Dumbarton and looking for a manager, so I applied. And, uh, oh, got, I need to cut you off. That's interesting. How do you apply to be a football manager? What do you do? No, what do you do? Do you do that I want to be a manager? I'm in yeah. America. Honestly, because I had done it because I didn't know what I was doing. I just, I, I'll be honest, I'd done it out of pure boredom. I went in, I just thought, I'll just apply, see what, what happens, see where, it, see where I am in terms of these sort of things. Because they were in the championship at the time, so I didn't really expect anything at all. So I got a call back saying, Look, can you, can you come back for an interview? And I said, Oh, I'm delighted to get an interview. So I never thought I'd get a reply. Um, and um, I said, But I'm sorry, I can't because my family were flying out for three weeks. Um, to America, to, to Florida, so... We well, didn't Skype, no? Um, they, they did suggest that, but I always think in Skype, if you're doing these things, you're at a massive uh, disadvantage. You might make an impression, didn't you? At a massive disadvantage. So I'd say I thanks very much. you're doing well as a guest. <laughs> uh, it's, this is hard, this. <laughs> 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 so, it's, uh, so I said, look, thanks very much, blah, 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 that's the end of it. And I got a call about 10 days later saying, he's still interested. And I said, of course, but you know my situation. Um, and I said I'm back on Tuesday and they said can you come in on Tuesday then I said no it's, it's too late I can come Wednesday so I went Wednesday night for the interview which was um, very casual shall we say and I was offered a job about an hour later and that was it I was, I was suddenly I'd went from leaving Hibs without a club and I was actually moving house that Saturday um, to having a game so you know things changed within an instant and then you just need, then you need to come up with, like, see how in that letter do you, do you write who you would have as your assistant, or do you, you just need to make that up? Like, do you, what happens? Do you go on the phone to your mate and go, how does that work? Uh, it would be like a cover letter you would send. Normally, a contact address. It'd be um, your tax, your CV, just like any other job, really. And then Aye. you sit and wait. You sit and wait, and then you might get a call saying you've been invited for an interview. And that at that stage, you would have to have a plan in your head of what you would possibly like to do. Um, then you'd probably go for the, normally you'd go for the interview. Um, you would know kind of early if you had a chance or not. Um, it's, when I look back on that one, I must have been the only candidate because uh, I got off the job within, um, you know, as I say, an hour. So, um, but at that time, I didn't. I was so green. I had, I had no idea. Of course, they must have wanted me because they wanted me in so quick to, to speak to them. Um, so uh, that's how the Dumbarton one certainly panned out. But you, you had a very, I mean, you played with Hibs, you played with Rangers. I mean, Dumbarton, obviously, if they did have any, you're a big, you're a big pool for them. Do you know what I mean? Like, you had a really established playing career, so you'd be going to Dumbarton. They must have had other people just butt the horn off, haven't you, though? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think at the time, it, it probably they were probably looking for me to play a little bit as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they were bought in the league, you know, I think it was five points or something, so... We didn't have a lot to lose, to be quite honest. We, we still had time to stay up. We still had time to do well. And we couldn't really lose anything because we resigned at the fact around Christmas time that we were actually going to be relegated. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were, we were lucky that, that winter when I when I got the job, we had about six weeks of just pure ice. So we had no games, which gave us time to get ourselves kind of sorted a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then we came back. We, we played Hamilton, sorry, in the Scottish Cup. They beat us three one at our place, and it was an easy, an easy win for them. And um, I think the biggest sort of mark of our achievement is we played Hamilton <clears throat> three games later after the we got back playing, and we beat them two 0 and we beat them quite easily. And that was probably the turning point for us because right. it showed us we'd won games up to that point, but this was a big one because it showed us how far we came. Uh, was that um, a statement? Uh, it was a statement to, to, to ourselves, really. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you just went head to head um, against the team that's top of the league and beat them two 0 So we knew we could do it, and from there on in, we just went on a decent run and managed to stay up. Brilliant. Who, where did you go after that? Was it St Mirren? We, went went to St Mirren. Uh, it's a big move for you, mate. Ah, yes. Yeah, 
they'd just been relegated as well from the Premier League. Very, again, this is it looks very simple for people. St Mirren was a good opportunity for me. I felt I'd run my time at Dumbarton. I think they probably had their time with me as well. So it kind of went, was at the right time. <clears throat> St Mirren obviously had been relegated from Premier League. Had quite a lot of managers. I think everybody was surprised the year before when Danny Lennon left um, and, and Tommy Craig took his position. Um, and then obviously Tommy Craig left and Gary Teal took the position. Um, who was already the assistant with Jim Goodwin uh, at the time. So when that season was finished and relegated, I went in. But I still had, they still had Gary Teal still had a playing contract, Jim Goodwin still had a playing contract. So there was a lot of there was a lot of tidying up to be done at the club. And to do that and try and, you know, stabilise it in the championship with the resources was very difficult. Mm. Aye, it must have been hard right enough uh... I always wonder, like like Grado said there, see if you if you talk about the, your assistant, how did you decide like who your assistant was going to be, and and obviously when you leave a club, you find that a lot of the assistants follow on with the managers. Is it is is your assistants and anything like thought about? Obviously, your assistant is uh, Colin Cameron, am I right? Yeah, Colin's right. Colin's assistant at the moment. I've so, had quite a lot of assistants. <laughs> Alec Miller was one of them, as I know. Alec Miller. That, I had, that must have been before. a bit weird, man. You being in your thirties and then Alec Miller with all that experience and being your assistant. Assistant, that's a bit of a kind of funny combo, isn't it? I it think be. about yeah. Think about all of the the experience that Alec Miller would have been able to hundred percent store on him, man. Aye, I mean, man. he was down at Liverpool with Hulley and all that. That's right. What what a yeah, what a you, career Alec Miller had. Great guy. Diff- different dynamics with you know different uh, people. Like my first assistant was Jack Ross at Dumbarton. And he's he oh, yeah. moved on to Hearts. Um, my second one was Mark uh, Gaym Buzlon, who's now at Hamilton. My third one was Mark Spalding, who's now at Rangers. Um, and then I went into went to your journey. It was Mark Fitzpatrick, and he'd been there quite a while. But we just felt at the time we needed someone full time. Um, and Colin Cameron. The, the, the bottom line, the reason I'm Colin Cameron is because he's um, he's been a manager in Championship. League One, he's won League One with Kevin Cowden Beef. Um, he's been a manager in, in League Two with Berwick Rangers. Um, he's got you know a vast amount of playing experience as well. So he, t- he ticked a lot of our boxes when we were looking. <clears throat> and since he's came in, it's got it's gone quite well. So, yeah, so what happens? What happens when it's an Edinburgh derby? <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> well, do you know what? That's funny. It's funny you say it because. Um, Let's take the last one for example. We didn't really talk about it, and we were we were glued to our phones watching um, who was who was playing that night, Clyde Montrose, because we were dying for a Clyde win or or just a Montrose not to win because they jumped above us in the league. So <clears throat> as much as we have a little bit of a laugh and joke about you know, the Edinburgh Derby in particular, you kind of lose focus on the other team. You, you don't really. Unless it's directly affecting you, you kind of lose what they're doing. And, and I, I was surprised as anybody who Hearts beat Hibs 3-1 in the so, last derby. What you what you try to say, and are you try to say that Hearts are that shite now that you don't give a fuck about them? I, I, <laughs> honestly, I, I, I hate to, I, and I've said to people I wouldn't do it, but I've seen them, I watched them three times because we played them in the Cup, you know, obviously beat us 5-0. I watched the three games before they played us and, and thought they were in big, big trouble. Big big trouble. I don't know about the That's a problem with Hearts fans. They get a wee bit too excited too early. I think they love to play Rangers. Go keep their powder dry. I both love to play Rangers twice and they beat Hibs twice. So how far is it, how how far can you take Airdrie, Jankie? Promotions. Um, yeah, we need to get out of League One. We need to go out of League One. Um, it was probably you know next year was probably our big big year this was our sort of we changed from a part-time to a hybrid full-time in the summer so it was right. difficult you know a lot of difficult difficulties going on there so next year was our real push and we're in actually a good position uh, we've signed up seven players not sorry nine players for next season already so we're actually a wee bit ahead of the game um on on that side of it but we certainly want to be pushing and as i said if, if league reconstruction which is getting banded about comes into play then um you know, hopefully we'll, we'll benefit from that as well. So is that is that the talk now then? Is that the talk? Because 
you can't you can't relegate Hearts and give Celtic the league, right? You can't. Yeah. It's it's Hearts have got a legal case there. So in my opinion, what you're looking at is promotion, uh, making it a twelve team league next season, and then having three relegations and putting it back down to ten the the following season. So what do you, what do you reckon? Do you think that's the way it's going to go with all of this nonsense that's going on? I don't know. I mean, I think it's very difficult. There's so many. Again, black and white. It looks it looks all right and normal. But when you look at the um, the whole thing, if you stop the league now, for example, and you give Celtic the league, Rangers are going to go absolutely tonto. If you relegate, if you if you give Celtic the league, you have to relegate Hearts. Unless yep. you reconstruct, unless you reconstruct the league, now, the, the league reconstruction can only benefit clubs. So, if, if again, the, like you say, the problem we're going to have if we put two up from the championship at the moment it would be Dundee United and uh, Inverness. You've immediately got Dundee from the Fairmont saying, "Well, well, wait a minute, we can still finish second with Aye. eight games to go." So and there's so many grey areas. Um, the only way I think they could get round it is if they reconstruct the league and then that three up three down has to be for longer than a year because your teams like Dundee don't firmly they're not going to vote for it if it's not you know it's just you need to get the votes it's all about the votes and if you don't give Celtic the title they could vote any way they want mm-hmm. and they're a big hitter and if you give Celtic the title Rangers will vote a different way and they're mm-hmm. a big hitter so we've got a really really hard situation uh, and I don't know the way around it, but I, I think nah. I think that you know you, so you unique, got, mate. You just... I think I think FIFA have got to make the call here across all of the I, competitions. I, I I think FIFA will try and get the league finished, but that could be well in. I mean, that'll be that could be October, honestly. You just have no idea, mate. You I mean, like this with this virus, the next week could be so crucial the next month you just don't know it's like nobody knows what's running about the corner with this shit so it's just there's that many anomalies you don't know where to start man we just don't know in terms of at the moment we're not allowed to go out and let you know in more than two people so it would suggest to me large gatherings will be the last on the list to be lifted you know that would be the last sort of ban be lifted so you know players need players at that point will have maybe missed two months three months they'll need a month to get ready and That's what I was talking about, Winter. I was saying they're so, going to do another pre-season. Another pre-season, aye. So it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be absolutely crazy. I, I mean, I just, I think my gut tells me, and I don't know, to avoid all the problems, they'll try and finish the seasons. I don't know if that's practical, though. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I wouldn't really want to be the one making the call either, man. I don't no, know. Definitely. Nah, well, Ian, every bad. week, well, Ian, every week on Football Daft, uh, we like to put our guests under a wee test, a wee quiz, their football knowledge in, in a 90-second time limit. Are you up for it? <laughs> go, go for it. It could be absolutely horrific, though. Well, you've got some... Let me see you, the other people that have that have, that have done it. Barry Ferguson, he's in the leaderboard with 12. He got 12, right? Bottom is, is 12. Uh, bottom of the league is David McCracken. He's got one for Falkirk. Uh. Alan Archibald done no bad. He done he done eleven. Lee Miller, Jordan Young, Bo Malcolm are on six. Surely you can beat six, mate. Depends how hard they are. Well, you <laughs> want to go for it? Go for it. John, can you put the timer on the clock, please? And your time starts now. Who plays at Glebe Park? You can say. Which SBFL club currently doesn't have a sponsor on their strip? Which English team are nicknamed the Terriers? That's the Terriers. Barnsley. Which Scottish club has a fish on its badge? Oh God, uh, Cove Rangers. <laughs> Who did John McGinn join Aston Villa from? Hibs. Dick Campbell currently manages which club? Oh, both. In what year did Rangers sign Mo Johnson? It would be... 92-1. Who did you make your Scotland debut against? Canada. Name the two animals on the Airdrie badge. No idea. Um, cat, cat and a dog. Who <laughs> <laughs> did James score an international hat-trick against? Who was that, sorry? 
what country did James Forrest score an international hat trick against? Cyprus. Who is the being scorer in the SPL? Let's get that. Uh, Eduardo. What? Who did you score your first Hib school against? Dunfermline. Who was the last Scottish to ma who was the last Scot to manage Man United? David Moyes. Time I don't think I think there was a wee break up there when you were asking the question about did you think it was the current top scorer on the SPL? Ian. Uh, but I've got no clue who it is. I uh, current, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, got it, you got it right. All time. All time. Oh, oh, we'll, oh get, we'll give him that. We'll give him that. We'll give him the point for that. We'll give him the point for that. point. Take the point. Take the point. Chris okay. Boyd is the answer, though, isn't it? That's uh, another boy day. Still Henrick or Scott St. Clair? Aye, well, listen, stats don't lie. Chris Boyd's your number one. Let's go. I can... I start... <laughs> oh, sorry, you've got to get when I'm saying that word. Sorry. <laughs> right, what's going on? Too busy battling me with boxing gloves anyway. Right, is your scores in? Yeah, we've got the scores in. Do you want, to go through, you want me to go through the answers? Uh, which English team are named, named the Terriers? It's Huddersfield. It's uh, Motherwell, who don't have a sponsor on their strip. Scottish Cup with a fish on the badge. It's Peter Heed. Uh, you got John McGinn going to Aston Villa from Hibs. Dick Campbell, yep. Uh, made Scotland to Gabriel's Canada. I can't believe you didn't get this one, Ian. Two animals in the Airdrie badge. There's a lion and a chicken on the Airdrie badge. Never got that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know why. I need to find out why they're there. I mean, how does that go with, how does that go with a diamond? I don't understand that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> James Forrest got his uh, international hat trick against Israel. Uh, we gave you the Chris Boy. Gave you the Chris Boy. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, when you're cracking up, mate. Oh, sorry. I'll go that. So you actually end up with a score of seven. Whoa! Yeah. Well done. Take that. Take Not that. too bad happy, at all. I like, that. I like your, I did like your answer, but I can't I dug. I just, I, get, get well, I actually, I know why it's got a tiger and a chicken on the badge. There you go. Because a tiger is the diamond of the jungle and a chicken is the diamond of the farm. <laughs> Oh, honestly, mate, oh. that's mental how you know this stuff. That's yeah, I made it up. I made it up. It sounds oh, yeah, plausible. I believed you. Yeah, I believed you. Well, that was good. No, man, that was a really good. I was going to tell mate. people that. You <laughs> <laughs> should like, still get one, too. You like, get that going, I'll mate. just tell them anyway. I'll just tell them anyway. They won't know. <laughs> anyway. I <laughs> 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 you've learned something. <laughs> Ian, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. Is there anything you would like to say to your uh, thousands of fans out there? Thousands of fans. Um, I wish I wish there was thousands of them. Um, <laughs> no, no, really not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, any last any points? Do you want to wish yeah, any? Uh, aye, Thanks mate. Very much. Aye. Um, That's what I'm going to say. All yeah, the best to Airdrie. Like <laughs> uh, I don't think we'll be seeing you any more time. Anytime soon. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe one day we might see you in a dugout at Easter Road, pal. Ah, well, you never know. You never, never know. Never know, mate. Aye. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Audio Frontier.